A really important thing to remember when investing is that in addition to inflationary losses, which go to benefit the banking industry, which I covered in the video, The Real Story of Money, you also have a lot of losses to brokers and other financial industry people who basically make a living off of investors without producing anything themselves. It's very important to understand how this money is lost to uh, brokers and others and be able to stop that loss. So, how does this work with investing in precious metals, for example? There are numerous ways in which people invest in precious metals, and let me go over them and give my opinions. A lot of people will tell you to invest in precious metals by simply investing in the stocks of precious metal mining companies. In my opinion, this is the worst way to invest because precious metal mining companies almost always eventually go bankrupt. The ore reserves are depleted and the company uh, folds. And the company insiders are going to know this before the normal stockholders know it, and the company insiders are going to sell out, and you as an outsider are going to be stuck holding the bag. So in my opinion, mining stocks are the worst way to invest in precious metals. You might as well buy any other stocks. In fact, mining stocks traditionally do worse than, than typical stocks. The second worst way to invest in precious metals is buying numismatic coins. When you buy numismatic coins, well, you walk into a coin dealer, for example, and they're going to tell you buy numismatic coins because the numismatic coins have a very high markup, a high commission. And as an outsider, or someone that's not intimately involved with uh, the coin <laughs> business, you're not going to know which coins have what markup and what's a good deal and what's not. And it just adds a whole layer of complexity that doesn't need to be there. So never buy numismatic coins unless you're really some kind of an expert on it. And you can buy from members of the public rather than a coin shop, which is always going to give a big markup. So that's the second worst way to buy precious metals. Now another very popular way recently to buy precious metals is through these electronically traded funds like GLD or the Silver Fund. Here's my opinion on those. I don't really understand how they're audited, and I'm very leery of any investment that isn't properly audited. Um, people who were around in the 70s and 80s remember there were a lot of funds and mints like this back then when there was a high supply of, or high demand for, for precious metals, and a lot of these mints opened and millions of dollars poured in from investors and then suddenly when the market started to go down these mints simply went bankrupt and the investors lost all their money. I mean, This even goes so far as uh, some people who think that it's, it's a way for the government to bleed off uh, interest in precious metals by simply allowing mints or electronically traded funds to open and not being audited correctly and so since the mints and the precious metals funds don't really have all of the reserves they promised to have it it kind of uh, dampens uh, the real demand on the precious metals market and, and stops the price of precious metals from shooting up and, and therefore indicating how bad inflation is. So I kind of think there there may be a degree of truth in that and anyway, I just don't invest in something that I don't understand how it's audited. So how do you buy precious metals? Well, one good option is the Perth Mint, which is different from these other mints that have been around in the past. The Perth Mint is kind of unique in that the government of Western Australia actually backs the mint, and in theory, if they ever went bankrupt, the government would bail out the depositors, kind of like the government in the United States promises to bail out the depositors of banks. Uh, there are also only about 12 brokers worldwide who are allowed to sell Perth Mint certificates, so you know that you're dealing with someone who is is uh, been checked out beforehand and is reliable. I've been watching the Perth Mint for about 10 years, and I've bought through them several times and never had a problem. Uh, one issue is that it's a minimum $50,000 purchase, um, so unfortunately that doesn't work for a lot of people. 
and you could pay about a 3% commission between the buy and the sell, which is pretty good. Uh, it works especially well for silver, so you don't have to take delivery of hundreds of pounds of silver. For the average small investor, though, a better option is just buying bullion coins from a local dealer. Now, if you live in New York or Los Angeles, you can get extremely low commissions, uh, on around 2% sometimes if you, you really haggle and, and uh, the dealer sees that you know what you're doing. So for platinum and gold, you can uh, get particularly good prices on bullion coins through a local dealer. And if you live elsewhere, outside of a large city, you can still buy through those coin dealers and take delivery. Just look them on lo up online. The cheapest ones are a couple here in Los Angeles. Names I can't remember right off the top of my head, but um, the main dealers in Los Angeles are generally the cheapest. Now beyond buying bullion coins, you can also buy bullion bars directly. Now these are sold by even larger brokers that generally sell to jewelry makers and to industry and then you pay extremely low commissions. Only buy bullion bars direct from someone who's selling straight from the mining company. Uh, you don't want to buy secondhand bullion bars because they're fairly easy to fake with uh, putting tungsten planks inside them, for example. So never buy secondhand bullion bars. Buy direct from a large dealer who is taking delivery straight from the mine. Um, what else? Yes, bullion bars, you're going to pay the lowest commission of all. Uh, there's a dealer, Amark, who I don't necessarily recommend for their customer service, but here in Los Angeles they have an extremely low commission between buy and sell on, on bullion bars of gold. And lastly, you can buy delivery of futures contracts and this is a really good option for things like platinum and palladium. Uh, platinum you can get relatively low commissions through the Perth Mint, you can also get relatively low commissions through uh, bullion coins, but uh, for palladium in particular uh, delivery of futures contract is your best bet and it's also a good, good bet for uh, silver and platinum and you can do it for gold as well. Your total loss between the buy and sell commission is I believe under 3%. Um, you'd probably want to do this through a larger brokerage firm like Lind Waldock who's familiar with the process. Some of the smaller uh, futures brokerage firms aren't familiar with actually taking delivery of, of the precious metals and, and delivering them. Uh, they can be shipped to a lot of uh, storehouses in big cities or you can have Brinks deliver them direct to you and total you pay very low commissions and it's much easier than you'd expect. You do have to buy at least $50,000 worth though I believe. Lastly there's the ultra rare precious metals market. Uh, this is things like iridium, ruthenium, uh, indium. Used to be a great, great opportunity for people to invest in. Unfortunately the federal government has pretty much closed down that market for mid-size or small investors. There were only a couple of dealers to begin with and the federal government basically intimidated them not to sell to investors anymore. Which is unfortunate but just something that you have to deal with under a, uh, a uh, fiat currency system where the governments don't want you to be able to protect your money.